I call Lord Young of uh, Cookham to ask the first oral question. My Lords, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. Lord Wilson of uh, Trading Up. Uh, my Lords, the Government has committed to making the process of obtaining legal authority to access a child trust fund more straightforward. A working group comprising the Ministry of Justice, the Treasury, HMRC and the Department for Work and Pensions has met several times to consider what more can be done and has also met with the Investing and Savings Alliance, the Financial Conduct Authority and the Money and Pension Service. The Court of Protection Rule Committee is reviewing its application forms and considering issues raised by campaigners. Uh, I'm grateful to my noble and learned friend who has only recently inherited this uh, pressing problem and I hope he can help the thousands of families who cannot access court funds without uh, child trust funds without a lengthy and at times intimidating procedure. On December the 3rd when I last raised this my noble friend Baroness Scott said the new working group would report to the Minister in early January. Can you tell the House what progress has been made and whether he might promote a more simplified and streamlined court procedure to access what are normally fairly small sums of money. Yes, uh, my noble friend is absolutely right uh, that because these funds are generally of relatively small amounts of money, it's all the more important that court procedures, which are designed to comply with the Mental Capacity Act 2005, are both accessible and proportionate. Rules and procedures are a matter for the courts and not for ministers but I will be doing all I properly can to ensure that children and young adults with a learning disability can access what are, after all, their own funds. Uh, Lord Turek. My Lords, in December, some finance firms started to allow parents supporting a disabled youngster to access trust funds without a court order in exceptional circumstances. 30% of families benefit but 70% are still required to go to court. Last week, in a meeting with the Investing and Saving Alliance, officials from the minister's own department refused to support this. Why was that? Um, my Lords, um, it is not for the government to comment on the development of private sector proposals and to the extent to which and whether they comply with the relevant legislation. We are working with all the financial trade bodies to ensure that parents and guardians of young people who do not have the required mental capacity to make the decision to access a child trust fund at age 18 are aware both of lasting powers of attorney and also the important benefit of making an application to the Court of Protection before they reach 18 to avoid court fees. Uh, Lord Wheatley. Um, but doesn't the uh, noble lord the Minister accept there's an urgency about this, that many families face huge burdens of administrative and other pressures when their child reaches adulthood. I mean, child trust funds can play an important part in helping with the transition, but accessing them should not become an additional burden, especially when relatively small sums of money are involved. Will the Minister please commit to ensuring that families will be supported proactively in these circumstances and do this with some urgency? Uh, my Lords, I can certainly commit to that. I have arranged meetings later this afternoon, indeed, to that particular end, and I will be taking a personal involvement to ensure that all that can be done is done. And I will also be liaising uh, with the President of the Family Division, but I emphasise that ultimately court rules are a matter for the court, and there is a constitutional propriety which I have to maintain. Uh, Baroness Browning. Uh, could I ask my noble friend about capacity here? Under the Mental Capacity Act, it's not a generalised presumption. It is specific to the issue in hand. Who exactly determines whether the individual has capacity? And if a professional assessment of capacity is needed, something that can cost several hundred pounds, who exactly is expected to pay? My Lords, um, there are a number of ways in which the issue of capacity is assessed by the court. Uh, the, those issues probably take me outside the bounds of an answer here. I will write to the noble lady to give more detail, uh, but there are a number of ways in which the requisite capacity or lack thereof can be established. Lord Addington. My Lords, uh, last time we spoke this, I said that the noble lord had pointed out an absurdity. He's still got his finger on it. Can the minister give us an assurance that they will not only get a solution, we will hear about when that solution 
is reached and that banks and their internal bureaucracy are informed about this so it can be quickly done? My Lord, the present situation is uh, absolutely unfortunate, and one of the problems is that uh, this does not seem to have been anticipated by the government which put child trust funds into existence. Uh, we are doing all we can, and I will certainly report back to your Lordship House uh, with, with the progress uh, we will make. But I have already said I am personally committed to ensuring that this problem is solved. Uh, Baroness Altman. My Lord, could, could my noble friend assure the House that any measures taken to help children um, with disabilities access their own money in their child trust funds. We'll also read across to junior ISIS, where I believe similar problems can arise, um, notwithstanding the fact that the government may have special responsibility here after the 2005 government offered parents extra payments to invest in a child trust fund if they were also claiming disability living allowance. My Lords, at the moment I don't see any conceptual distinction between child trust funds and junior ISAs. Uh, what we put in place to solve this problem ought to be, in principle, applicable to junior ISAs as well. Uh, Baroness Wheatcroft. Those who look after children with learning disabilities deserve our help and admiration. They don't need unnecessary obstacles being put in their way. Is there any evidence that those trying to access the funds that we're discussing this morning have anything but the best of motives? The, the, um, the, the noble lady is certainly right. Um, virtually everybody does have the best of motives, but there have been cases uh, where protections afforded by the Mental Capacity Act 2005 have unfortunately been needed. One has to remember ultimately that one is dealing with the funds of somebody who lacks the capacity to deal with them themselves. And that is why the Mental Capacity Act puts in protections uh, which may well be needed. Uh, Lord Pomsonby of uh, Shawbridge. A professional actu actuary has been helping campaigners to identify the aggregate amount of money disabled young people could lose from their child trust fund as a result of the current court process. The results show that if one in four parents give up um, uh, pursuing these funds because of the perceived difficulty in, in accessing the money. And the actuary estimates £107 million could be lost to those children over the next 10 years. This money is being locked away in individual accounts forever. What assurance can the Minister give that any new solution will be designed to make it easy, as easy as possible, for, the, for these families to access these benefits for the young people? My Lords, I don't want anybody to give up uh, accessing money which is rightfully theirs. So far as fees are concerned, there are a number of provisions in place. But, uh, but to sum it up, the Government's intention is that no one who needs to apply to the Court of Protection solely to access a child trust fund will pay fees. Uh, Lord German. Further to the answer the noble and learned lord gave to Lord Tui, I wonder if the, uh, the Minister could tell the House why it is that the scheme which the investment and uh, savings uh, body has put in place while waiting for a permanent solution and has been operating, which moves the system from cumbersome to semi-cumbersome and not a full solution, why is that not getting the blessing of the uh, Ministry of Justice in order that they can at least make some progress in this matter? Uh, my Lords, the reason is that it is not for the Ministry of Justice to give its blessing to private sector schemes and to uh, say whether they do or do not comply with the relevant legislation. The relevant legislation is important. It's there to protect people. And if the private sector wants to put in a scheme, that is a matter for the private sector. So far as my department is concerned, we need to make sure, so far as we can, that the court rules and procedures are, are both appropriate, proportionate and accessible. A Baroness Finlay of Flanders. I declare I chair the National Mental Capacity Forum. As COVID lockdown difficulties for the Court of Protection have led to delays now around 20 weeks for uncontested applications, can the government confirm that forms marked urgent are prioritised and digital options are being explored by the court to improve access while retaining the important protections from the MCA against exploitation or misuse of funds? 
My Lord, so far as the waiting time is concerned, the noble lady will be aware that two weeks of that is mandatory under the Act. However, so far as the rest of the period is concerned, first of all, if applications are marked as urgent, they are dealt with on an expedited basis. And on the second point, court staff are putting uh, in place new digital ways of uh, working the procedure to try and speed things up. Lord Vesey of Didcot. I thank the Minister for being so brief as to let me get in. And uh, may I point to my entry in the Register of Members' Interest working with the Investing and Savings Alliance. I was delighted to hear what the Minister said about there being no conceptual difference between a child trust fund and a junior ISA. Is it now not the case, now that this issue has been raised, that the uh, Department should now grasp simplifying legal procedures for a whole host of financial products and procedures? Can we not see in the next year the Wilson reforms as his legacy? Uh, my Lord, I, I, regret, uh, the, I regret that my noble friend is already talking about my legacy when I've only, <laughs> when I've only been here about six weeks. Um, I, in future, I will make longer answers. Uh, <laughs> Um, but but the, the, my, my noble friend does raise an important point. Um, I do emphasise that the constitutional position is that court procedures and rules are a matter for the courts. But so far as I am concerned, I think over the whole gamut of civil justice, we need to make sure that the response of the justice system is proportionate to the summing issue and the issues which are being argued about. And to that extent, I do agree with my noble friend's point.